Our chapter for today is about the real study of the genetic information. When we say genetic characteristics, we have to talk about something known as genes. And for sure, we have to talk about their expressions. The big secret of our characteristics is found in our genes. So, let's go with the gene Gini. Let's have a quick revision about the chromosomes. As you know that the chromosomes are the carriers and they are the real carriers of the genetic program or the genetic information. Observe document one very well. You will see that chromosomes, they are located in, you have to find the answer. And each chromosome is made up of, also you have to find the answer under the box. So, the chromosome which is located in the nucleus, it's made up of a DNA molecule. It is a double helix DNA molecule. And as you see that, the DNA molecule is made up of, or it constitutes a sequence of nucleotides. But a DNA molecule also is segmented into parts or portions or segments. What do we call each segment? Each segment is called a gene. And maybe a DNA molecule, it may carry several genes and several sequences. Now, Let's take into consideration one segment. In other words, we have to take into consideration one gene. And this gene, for example, is responsible for giving the hair color. I'm going to give you a few minutes to read very well what is found here and the given in order to fill the table. So as you see now, in a diploid cell, there are, the chromosomes are found as pairs. And for each chromosome, there is a copy or a version for this gene. For example, the hair color gene is found in two alleles in a pair of chromosomes. The two alleles are capital B and small b in the brown individual. Okay? And they are different in the second one. These two alleles together, they give something known as the genotype. And this genotype is responsible for giving the physical appearance, the characteristic, which is the phenotype. So, for example, the capital B and small b genotype, they give the phenotype, which is brown, an individual one. However, in individual two, the phenotype changes due to the different alleles he carries. Here are some examples about certain genes that may code for certain physical characteristics, such as the one which code for the height. So, the genotype could be written in different ways. Three given ways are given for you. But you have to know that each genotype is responsible for giving its specific phenotype. Some genes may code also for diseases, such as hemophilia. A healthy individual will have capital H, capital H, or capital small. But if the genotype is a small h, a small h, he will be hemophilic. There is a gene also, which is a very important gene. It codes for our blood group. For example, blood group A, it could be a genotype or it could have a genotype AA or AO. And in this way, he is of blood group A. When we have to say a gene, we have to say a code. So this gene codes for certain characteristic or a certain information we can say. What about information? It is the phenotype. Okay, so the phenotype is the expression of the gene. But at the molecular level, what do we mean by this phenotype? At the molecular level, the phenotype is about or it's because of a certain protein which is coded by the gene. The gene, which is specific in this way, or in this case, it gives or it codes for a specific protein, which is the information or the phenotype itself. Let's discuss together the phenotypes. What do we mean by phenotypes or examples of phenotypes? If I ask you to give me some examples directly, you will give me. So, such as eye color, height, skin color, shape of the nose, shape of the eye etc etc great all of these are physical characteristics and they are known as physical phenotypes because of certain proteins that give the structure of an organ that are known as structural proteins 
But my second question is, are these the only characteristics? Are these the only phenotypes? And are these the only produced proteins? So the answer for sure is not. Other proteins such as hormones, enzymes, antibodies are also considered as phenotypes. But do they give physical appearance? No. Such proteins, they have a real function to do. They are functional proteins. So that's why we can classify proteins that give characteristics into two classifications, structural proteins and functional proteins. Please, what I want from you now to classify the following proteins I give you as examples in a table as structural or functional. But my coming idea is what? If there is any change or modification in a structural protein, for example, the protein which gives the eye color, what will, what will be the result in this case? Simply and easily, the result is a different eye color. But what will be the result or what will be the surprise here if there is any modification in the protein which has a function, a protein which has a function such as a hormone, so... What will be your hypothesis in this case? It's a real problem. You have to think about it. Here are the answers. So the classification of structural and functional proteins is an easy classification, as you see. But let us discuss the modification. Let's consider that there is a modification at the level of the sequence of nucleotide, which codes for an insulin, for example. So, the insulin will not be produced in its correct configuration or in its correct way. And in this way, there is a very important consequence. The hormone may lose its function. So, that's why the modification is a very important to take it into consideration here. If it hits a functional protein, we may observe certain consequences such as diseases, these diseases may appear and the consequence is very hard in this way. This slide makes you familiar to a protein. A protein, which is a macromolecule, it's made up of certain peptides and each peptide is made up of certain sequence of amino acids. Amino acids are the smallest units of a protein. There are only 20 types of amino acids, okay? But in number, there is a very big and important number of amino acids. The only origin of amino acids is our food. For example, we have to take a very important meal of proteins, such as meat, red meat, fish, others, okay? This meal will supply our body with important number of amino acids for sure after digestion. So our cells will absorb these amino acids in order to form our proteins. In this slide, we have to collect together all our information that we took from the previous slides. So take into consideration the location of each molecule. The DNA is located in the nucleus. The protein is located or synthesized in the cytoplasm. Take a few minutes, try to discover all the details of this document, and let's continue. Our problem here is related to the location of each molecule. The DNA, and taking into consideration a gene, which carries the genetic code to code for certain protein, is found in the nucleus, and its language is nucleic acid language or nucleic language, because it's made up of nucleic acids, okay, or nucleotides. And the protein, on the other hand, it's made up of amino acid, so its language is amino acid language or proteic language. Now my question is, how does it come for a gene of a nucleic language to give a protein of amino acid language, taking into consideration the location of each? the gene which is found in the nucleus and it can't go outside and the protein which is synthesized in the cytoplasm. 
So for sure together, we have to find or we have to think about a relation or a mediator between this gene in the nucleus and the protein in the cytoplasm. Our problem will be solved here by giving you this document. Try to find a mediator between these two macromolecules, the DNA molecule and the protein molecule. You will find that the mediator is a simpler molecule than the DNA and its name is RNA. Now we have to explain together why the RNA molecule is an important molecule or it can play the role of a mediator. If you have to compare it to the DNA molecule, first of all, it's a single-stranded molecule. However, the DNA is a double-stranded molecule. So, on the other hand, it's a very short or shorter molecule than the DNA. That's why, and because of these characteristics, this molecule can traverse the nuclear membrane. So, an RNA, which is a copy of DNA, it copies the code from the DNA, and because of its characteristics, it can leave the nucleus from the pores of the nuclear membrane in order to go to the cytoplasm. And now, the code is transferred from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. The code here may help now, and it has to help, in the synthesis of the protein. So, on the other hand, we can say that this RNA molecule is the one which knows the two languages. It is the real translator. It can know or it can carry the DNA language, the nucleic language, and it can translate it into another language, which is the proteic language. And the protein is synthesized in this way because of the code carried outside of the nucleus.